What, do you, what are you asking? What do you want? You're going for? You're going for? The, the studies. There's been plenty of Stud okay. studies done, um, and and no one's ever tried. Let's let's talk about what that is. Is that you know certainly, first of all, no one has ever died from an overdose of marijuana. No one ever has. But let me tell you, plenty of people have died because of marijuana. Plenty of people. Let me tell you about the little girl whose parents were so toked up all the time in Colorado that they didn't feed her and she died to death. Or let me talk about the people that pulled out. Huh? I talked to a children's services person out there. I talked to a woman who was in charge of children's services out there who gave me that story firsthand. Let's talk about the people on the highways. We know that out in where it's legalized in, Mar in Colorado that the, um, the um, uh, rates of, of fatalities have gone up because of marijuana. They've doubled. Where actually fatalities have gone down in, on car accidents in, um, Mar in Colorado overall. But for those that involve marijuana have gone up. The Haida report tells us that. So we know there are people that are dying in car accidents. But we also know that young people, young people now who get started on marijuana, and because there's such this open belief that it is a benign, wonderful drug, that young people have this perception that it's easy to get a hold of and it's easy to use and that it's okay to use because it's medicine. What they're doing is starting at very young ages. And when you start putting marijuana on a brain of a child whose brain still develops until the age of about 25, you've, you've interfered with that normal process of that person. Um, uh, development. And we have a wonderful study out of New Zealand that, that went on for 30 years, a longitudinal study that went on for 30 years that tells us that when young people start using marijuana and use it consistently and persistently over a long period of time, they lose as many as eight IQ points. Now, I don't know about anybody in this room, but if you use eight, I, I mean, this is a study. You can laugh. You can do whatever you want. This is research and study. It's well known. It's well documented. I'm going to interrupt. Uh, I think we've broadened it out, obviously we've broadened it out tonight to, to the overall legalization of recreational use of marijuana as well. And that's going to happen in this, in this, tech, in this context, but let's try and narrow it down to legalizing uh, mar medical marijuana at this point. And we're getting uh, input as well from social media tonight. We'll go over to the social media center here right now. Adam Slinger. Bob, good evening. We have had hundreds of comments today. We were asking you to tell us online with the hashtag Your Voice, Your Future what you think about this issue, uh, both pros and cons, obviously. One comment that we have, a supporter writes, I know it's helping because it's helping my brother who can't eat. He was in the medical field a long time, and then he got this bad cancer. He couldn't eat, so his doctor told him to try this, and we're seeing a big change in him. He can eat a little now. If this is helping people who are sick, please help them. One of the people who writes in opposition of this, Maurice Braxton says, I'm sick of people saying marijuana has never killed anyone. What about the dealers, people who have been robbed? Just because it's legal doesn't mean that people won't attempt to break into some of these businesses that are selling it. Possibly the owner of the businesses could get hurt. It's happening where people are getting robbed for cigarettes. And I want to end with a question, Bob. Cheryl Sanch writes, how are we going to determine the proper length of time between use and other tasks? Basically, she's asking, how do you go from intoxication to sobriety? What about a doctor who has to perform heart surgery, uh, a bus driver who's going to pick up kids, or an airplane, airplane pilot who has to take off for a flight? How are you going to regulate this type of behavior? Adam, thank you. Adam Slinger in our social media center tonight. Chris Van Oker, you've got another instant poll question here. Folks, get your clickers ready. Our next question is, should Ohio allow the sale and use of marijuana for medical purposes if it's prescribed by a doctor? For those in the audience, hit one for yes and two for no. And we're going to close the voting with about 129 responses. Bob, you can see the results. 77% of those here tonight say yes. Yeah, very much in keeping with our, with our first question. Uh, go to your next question there, and let's, let's see this one. This question is, again, for those in the audience, do you believe marijuana is addictive? Again, on your clicker, one for yes, two for no. And with the polling now closed, Bob, 67% of those in the audience say no, they don't think marijuana is addictive. Is it addictive, doctor? <laughs> I, we know marijuana is addictive. It's not highly addictive, but for... 
Probably 10% of people that use marijuana daily become addicted. Last year in Ohio, there were 1,300 adolescent patients being treated for marijuana addiction. And to have an addiction, there has to be withdrawal. There's a definite marijuana withdrawal syndrome. And um, if you, as we spoke about with younger kids, if you get 14, 15 year olds starting to smoke weed, their chances of becoming addicted double. And people that are smoking weed every day are like 25, 30% likely to become addicted to it. So, and obviously one person's addiction is another person's daily use. But um, I mean, what we know about marijuana is that um, if you're smoking weed every day, you're high all the time. And uh, the First marijuana go. levels get higher and higher. Okay. So I say the same question, you know, do you want your doctor treating you when they've got a 200 point level of THC in their system? Yes. I mean, we absolutely know. So, so what's that do to people? You don't think straight. You don't have short term memory. You don't consistently solve problems. Perception is messed up. So. So you this, might this, feel better, but you're not doing better. This is to say that uh, you're going to see a situation like they have in California where it's been legalized for medical purposes for many years now, and there's widespread abuse. You can just wander into and a million speaking of the California, you want, know how California works? Suddenly there's strip malls of shady physicians right. that if you come in and drop your 200 bucks down, you can get your card to get marijuana. But what about that, John Party? Well, I'll tell you what, the, you know, nobody wants to have a physician you know, who's high oper doing heart, open heart surgery or do you want a, a pilot piloting a plane. But uh, if you look at the statistics, uh, you know, the vast majority of medical malpractice has to do with fatigue when you know, interns and people who have been working for shifts for, for 30 hours plus make a mistake. So I think that would be something that would be a lot more of a concern than whether someone who may have to use uh, therapeutic cannabis Again, remember, you got to realize there's a number of different ways to, to medicate. Um, there are high CBD, low THC strains that are actually very effective. I met a gentleman out in California named Larry Ringo who's actually growing these now, strains. What, what about the issue, though, of if we legalize marijuana for med medicinal purposes here, that it's, there's widespread abuse now on a recreational level? Well, it's just like anything else. I mean, th there are, are you know, doctors and pilots who, who have done a lot of harm on alcohol. And just like anything else, we don't encourage impairment. As a matter of fact, the, the, our amendment specifically states that it does not permit an, an impairment you know, operating a motorized vehicle or, or other device. So it's very specific. It's not, we're not changing impairment laws. What's going on is there's, there's a discrimination against cannabis <laughs> patients because cannabis stays in the system for such a long time and you're not impaired. The, you know, the standard test right now will actually some, show somebody with cannabis in their system days and days after they use cannabis, whereas alcohol leaves their system very quickly. Ask anybody who, you know, who, who knows somebody who's an alcoholic, they can go on a, a weekend bender and go to work on Monday and try to operate a forklift and crash the forklift and hurt somebody, and they'll test absolutely negative for alcohol, but the alcohol is a contributing factor. So how does that jibe with the current testing today? And it doesn't make sense. We need Yolanda, another question from you on your side? Yeah, I do. Uh, gentleman right here, could you say your name and state your question? Uh, well, I don't have a question. My name is Harold Brideball, and I would just like to go ahead and tell a statement to everybody that's here, even the, the people that's up, up, up on the tower. Um, I was diagnosed with a rare syndrome called transverse myelitis. If anybody knows what that is, if you would, raise your hand. Okay. It's a uh, rare syndrome. It's a neurological syndrome, and it basically affects the, the uh, spinal cord. It's in relation with MS, okay? And uh, I was diagnosed with that for about, uh, about six years ago. So uh, I was, I was 30, 34, 35 years old. And uh, the doctors would give me muscle, relax muscle relaxers. And when I would take them, it would totally ruin my day. Um, being doped up on pills, having to, to be doped up on pills just to live your life without pain or uh, muscle spasms. And the reason why I'm not standing right now is because if I had a muscle spasm right now, it'd probably scare everybody in this room, okay? A friend of mine went to Arizona and uh, he, he grows cannabis and uh, he actually does it um, organically, okay? And we had went out there for about two weeks last year, okay? Now mind you, I've had muscle spasms for a very long time because I refuse to be on pills, okay? And when I was there, I smoked cannabis for two weeks, and I never had a muscle spasm at all. 
Now I come back to Ohio and I still have to face the pain and I have to still face the muscle spasms. The muscle spasms are so bad that it scares my children at night and they think that I'm having a heart attack. So, you know, for me as an Ohioan, I would love for it to come here. You know, I was responsible with it. I smoked it at night. For two weeks, I'd never had a muscle spasm. But now the doctors, they want to put me back on these prescription drugs, and I know what they do to me and my body. So, you know, I would like to vote for it, you know? We had another question real quick. State your name and your question. My name is Sharicia Gray. I'm focused on Dr. Master. My son is incarcerated because of probation violation of smoking marijuana. He had straight A's in college, okay? My son was on Wellbutrin and all them ADH meds. He was more suicidal on that than on marijuana. I would vote for legalizing marijuana for his sake. He's 21 years old. He's not suicidal when he's on marijuana. He's very calm, <coughs> collective, helpful. But on Wellbutrin and all them ADH meds and stuff, that's no good. It doesn't work. So do you think that is, it weighs out? your opinion when it comes to people with ADH oppositional disorder? But, you know, I th think... Sure. Um, you know.